Beware, you're in for a scare. From the pages of Ariel Stein's best-selling books comes a brand new series of Goosebumps videos. Videos that will creep you out, freak you out, or simply make you laugh your head off. Hello everyone, give a Goosebumps fan, I'm back to talk about the differences and the comparisons. I forgot, just just the book versus the episode. Let's see what happens in my Harry's adventure. This one actually is not really in depth because, well, Paparina, thanks to Paparina, he actually didn't really care too much about this. But the interesting part is that this shows that, again, Squid Gyps says how the writers of the show suck. But this one actually shows that, no, the writers don't suck. The writers actually had their creativity and turned this book interesting it really did they actually did it very interesting and also just brings you the question of oh, hold on so there was no dog in in revenge of the law gnomes there was no dog in be careful what you wish for but my harry's adventure they had no choice but to get a bunch of dogs we're just like I'm pretty sure you guys could have actually gotten all those other dogs that you had in this episode and showed them in the other episodes. I'm pretty sure you could have actually had dogs in episodes that's needed. Does Revenge of the Law Gnomes really need a dog? Not really. You guys wrote that out, but I think technically they would have kept it in and have the whistle part be a part of it if you guys would have actually kept them in there. But of course... I don't know. There's lots of stuff to actually talk about when it comes to Revenge of Law Gnomes, considering there's so much in a book that they actually had to be like, well, we can't get that much people. So, yeah, we can't do that. I'm careful what you wish for. Should they actually have a dog in it? The dog doesn't really play a good part in it. In Revenge of Law Gnomes, the dog definitely played a part. But be careful what you wish for. The dog is there, but the dog doesn't really do much. Anyways. So here's what happened in the book version. Book version, we got Larry Boyd, and he's the only child. He has a cat named Jasper. He's in a band, and he cares about his hair. He cares about his looks. Stray dogs chase him. It's kind of funny considering my mom had a reverse. I mean, yeah, just one cat kept on chasing her every single day when she was a kid. So anyways... Larry actually plays the guitar. Lily is his best friend. She has a pirate coin and her eyes is two different colors, blue and green. The band actually readies for Battle of the Bands and they have a rival, Howie and the Shouters. So Larry, after the after the band actually goofed off a little bit, they found some instantan in a garbage. So in a dump in a um dumpster. So apparently they were walking and it's in the dumpster while in the episode, they actually spinned it and actually made it very, very convenient, just like monster blood. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're going to actually cheap ourselves and not have to spend more money. Like for instance, monster blood, they actually had to spend more money and have a store. Yeah. So they had to actually get a store so they can actually find a monster blood. But instead they're like, no, 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 we're going to spin this and say the monster blood is in the room that he shouldn't be going into. And plus a witch is sealed inside of it as well. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> She's like, okay, sure. Whatever. Frigate. This one day, actually, it's a little bit different. And plus I'm pretty sure the kids wouldn't actually want to reach their hands into a dumpster anyways. So let's see. They actually try it on. They all try it on. Nothing happens. Larry gets a doctor call from Dr. Merkin. Apparently, well, it's said in the episode every two weeks. In a book, we don't really get that much. He just comes sometime. So I bet, let's just say by episode every two weeks. So his two weeks are up. He has to get a shot. And he has a condition where he overheats and he doesn't sweat. Oh, in the episode, they don't even mention the fact that he doesn't sweat. So, yeah, every few weeks, Larry gets a shot. Larry is getting hair and his black hair all over on his. It started on the back of his hands. So, yeah, and he shaves it off and it comes back the next day. Like, like freaking. Well, 
at least it's better than what happened with Santa Claus with um Scott Calvin, aka Tim Allen. You know, as soon as he shaved, like seconds later, his beard comes back and it's like, what the f <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's like he gives a he actually gets a better window than Scott Calvin. So he gets lots more hair. Yeah, this is where it just gets scaled down because there's not more much more to say. It's the fact that he gets more hair grown and he try he hides it from his family. He eventually removes it by shaving. And of course, it's the same old thing again where it's repeating. So Lily and Danny actually gets the question of like, um, are you guys getting hair grown? So, you know, of course, crazy enough, this actually is kind of like a puberty challenging book where it's like, yeah, yeah. Something's funny is going on with my body. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so eventually Lily actually answers and says, yes, I'm doing the same exact thing as you. I'm getting hair. That's no, there's like the instantan. It's, it's the reason why. And he tries to take the instantan and take it to the doctor. And sadly, the bottle actually breaks. So <laughs> Larry's friends start to disappear one by one. And then eventually we find out that Lily comes to Larry, but she's a dog. Larry and the rest of the, of the band, which is, I thought it was two people, but it actually might be three. And Lily's the only one who disappeared. It gets very like, what the frick, where it's like, okay, you have to be a little bit clearer. You say that two are there or are three there and Lily missing. And that's where it's like, I kind of didn't understand what it was saying there. So they attended a battle of the bands and well, the band sucks. Crazy enough that in the book, they actually reference, um, I want to hold your hand from the Beatles. They mention Rolling Stones. So it's like they do mention that in the book. But episode wise, I guess technically it costs money, lots of money if they really want to actually do that. So that's why in the episode, they actually cut everything completely. So, yeah, and during that Larry's face actually grew. Yes, yeah, Larry, Larry's face actually grew hair, and people thought, "Oh my gosh!" So they actually thought that was a stunt, and they won. <laughs> the parents eventually revealed the truth, which twenty minutes later or something. So does that mean he's actually home or something? Hopefully, he's at home. So, anyways. His parents tell him the truth and it turns out Larry's a dog and Dr. Merkin actually is a mad scientist. And of course, Larry is actually back being a dog and Dr. Merkin is now focusing on cats. So, yeah. Episode version. Episode time. So in the episode, Larry, we get the introduction of Larry and he's getting chased by dogs like right there. And note, this is what are the ones that Larry this char a character in the whole entire episode actually narrates the whole entire scenario. He narrates. Pretty sure that when it comes to Goosebumps, this is the first time ever you actually truly had a narration part. I mean, yes, I think in Say Cheese and Die Again, they did actually have a narration part in there. I think they did. But this is the one that actually he continues to narrate. He continues to actually talk to you. So... And it makes sense. It makes sense. So anyways, Dr. Dr. Merkin actually says, well, you shouldn't be running because if you run, you're going to flare up your allergies. And that's why you're wheezing here. So that's apparently his advice to tell him. So he's going to the band and well, he had to take a detour because he had to climb up a tree and say, there you go, dogs. You can't take me down. <laughs> the tree branch falls and then Lily comes to the rescue and she has a gold coin, but they don't mention it's a pirate coin. They just say it's a gold coin. So, yeah, lucky for them. It's like sad for them that they did this in like 1995, 1996. And Pirates of the Caribbean that happened like in the 2000s, they were giving out coins up the wazoo. So it's kind of crazy if they could have actually gotten that coin. If they would have gotten one of those coins, that would have been badass. I really hope that when it comes to the reboot of this someday someday someone actually is crazy enough to actually be like yeah i have the gold coin from pirates of caribbean here you can use it as a prop for one for one of your episodes it's like that would be awesome that would be crazy 
So anyways, they have a rock band and they call it a rock band and they practice at an empty house. So an empty garage of an empty house, they actually practice in it. And apparently there's lots of houses that's becoming empty all around them. Oh yeah, and the house that they're in is Duncan's house, the Duncans. So apparently, yeah, the band suck horribly. It's it's this bad. It's very bad. And it mentions Oh, there's no mentions of my gosh, I can't see. Oh, the Rolling Stones. Yeah, there's no mentions of any of the bands that was in the book. No mentioning of the actual bands. So they have a gig. It's a birthday party. So as you guys can figure, they replace Battle of the Bands with a birthday party. Yeah. So we, they get to see the Instatan, and the Instatan is in the garage. Yes, the abandoned garage, the empty house. They have the Instatan, not a dumpster. They have it. And what's crazy enough is that what? Oh, wait. First is the voice of reason where Larry's like, yeah, I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to do it. While everyone else actually just rubs it in and be like, yeah, we could be tanned. It would be like as if we went to Hawaii. And Larry's being the voice of reason. And here's one key thing that the writers did that was very creative and shows you that, yeah, they're creative. Don't diss them, would you? They said, Harry Larry, king of the wimps. It's like, yeah, that actually fits in as if it's part of the book. But of course, that was never mentioned in the book, but still is part of the book. It sounds like part of the book. So Lily actually convinced him to try it, and he does. And of course, well, one of them actually read it and said, caution, do not use after 1991. So, yeah, you had even paparini was like yeah you don't even listen to expiration dates and it's like well there you go they actually mentioned an expiration date and use that as a key component of why in the world is happening to them is because the instantan said doesn't don't use it after 1991 so anyways larry's jokes are actually been like ah ah I'm, oh my gosh and then well, they were about to actually say, oh, yeah, we'll show you. And Larry just faints out of nowhere because apparently that run took a lot out of him. So, yeah, he fainted and then we see him at home. He gets a shot. Turns out it's a week early and it's because of in quotations is overheating and it's overheating actually flares up his allergies. So, yeah, we get at night and Larry actually is talking to Jasper. The one-legged slave? No, 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 Jasper. The the night the cat. My goodness. Uh so Larry actually finds hair while he was in bed. So instead of the whole he's brushing his teeth in the book and with his toothbrush and then notice that his hair is on his paw on his back of his hands. Nope, this time he's actually in the bedroom. Yep, and Jasper's like <sighs> and rocks away because it's like, you know, chances are it smells like a dog. So <laughs> So he goes to the bathroom. The parents actually are outside of the bathroom and being like, Oh, honey, are you okay? It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, what the freak? Yeah, they're concerned about him. And he's like, uh, Do you guys have any hair remover? And they're like, Hair remover? And it's like, Oh, never mind. And he just takes the shaver and starts shaving. And apparently, the dad's now like, uh, Can I get my shaver by any chance? Can I get my razor? And then. <laughs> the attitude came out of nowhere it's like yeah you see this book was actually hinting at puberty and look at them now they're actually doing this moment of where larry's giving attitude to his dad just like as if a teenager would thus look at that you see that they actually did a nice work of art that wasn't even in the book yeah they're not creative at all yeah my foot <laughs> So next day, Larry and Lily actually are talking and, well, apparently Manny's missing and, well, there's some hair talk and they both deny that they are getting hair back there. So they actually did a complete twist of what happened in the book because in the book, Larry asks, Lily says yes, and she says me too. In the episode, they both deny it because, well, it seems it's flowing decently. It's like a decent flow. So, anyways, she's like, <laughs> Harry Larry, hair on his head, hair on his mind, only cares about his looks. It's like, you see, 
my gosh, you guys know how to write a girl hook, line, and sinker. I mean, holy freak, the freaking added the freaking personality of her. It's like, wow. <laughs> oh man, check out girls with goosebumps. Anyways, they go to Manny's, and it turns out his house is gone and his room. The interesting part is, unlike the book that says everything's packed up and gone, his room, however, has everything in it. It's like, yeah, his room has everything in it. And then all of a sudden we got this weird old bastard who's actually is like, um, uh, oh, wait, okay. His weird old bastard who actually is like, I'm selling the house. And if you have the money, I can actually let you live here. But if you don't get the fuck out, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, get the fuck out. Okay. Get out of my damn house. It's like, what the frick? You know, it's like this, you know, the guy. At least the good news is that that guy isn't as bad as I make him sound, but still, he was like, get out of the house because, well, he's trying to sell it. So it makes sense, even though it's kind of weird that, you know, but on the other hand, you know that it's not really that weird because the freaking um parents, well, the kid's gone. Since the kid's gone, it's like, why well, keep all his stuff? So there's just enough of this stuff. Sounds like I need to dink another video, so I'm going to do that. Anyways, so interesting enough, we have dinner at Lily's, a scene that wasn't in the book whatsoever, but they did it to actually the part of where it's like completely insane and crazy and funny where we have, they talk about Manny and they don't really actually mention much. The parents don't really mention much. Then all of a sudden Larry's head, <laughs> hands, hair, man, get out of here. Larry's hand, hand hand hairs returns and then he gave um the dad some corn lily's dad corn there's a hair on it he swapped that corn out of the way oh my gosh yes and he gets another one and then all of a sudden there's just lots of craziness of where it's like oh my gosh the arms he's getting arm hair so he had no choice but to actually duck into lily's bathroom and then well he tries to actually find something to shave all of it off but they don't have any shavers in the house for some reason even though it's kind of interesting where you're like hmm then how does lily actually not i mean lily chances are does have hair the thing is is that it's weird how she has hair but they don't have no shaver or maybe she actually secretly bought a shaver but we don't even know that that town even has a freaking store so and technically, yeah, it was kind of retconned where there's no dumpster where they found the instant hand. So chances are, I bet pretty much that in the book, that was in the back of a store. So they did have a store there. But in this one, they don't have a store at all. They didn't find any. They found it only in the house. So anyways, <clears throat> so he decides to actually do two things, either face the embarrassment Oh my goodness, man. Girls. Psh. Anyways, he has two choices. A, face the embarrassment where he actually has to go downstairs and, oh my gosh, look at his hair on his arms and hands. Or B, jump out the window. And what's even crazier is that there's dogs out there in the window. What the frick? So he had to choose. And he chose to jump out of the damn window and run for his damn life from the damn dogs. <laughs> I mean, that, that's pretty funny. That is pretty damn funny so when he comes home he has to do a hair check and he checks and of course well his arms is yeah, now the newest reveal his legs oh my gosh so what he does is actually reveal his hair to his mom and dad and well then dr lyle yeah they actually give him a first name dr lyle merkin he actually Mention, yeah, so he mentions the tan and no, they said no, the, the tan didn't do anything with it, that whatever, it doesn't do anything. Most likely a skin irritation created by nerves and apparently because you are nervous about that audition you have for the, the birthday party, that's what's going on. That's why you have all that hair. <laughs> so the next morning, Larry actually walks in. He actually sees a dog and it turns out the dog is Lily and well, it turns out that the parents of Lily actually starts playing dumb. 
So they said that Lily doesn't exist. We don't know a Lily. And then it's like, forget her. It's like, how the frick does that work? Where it's like, okay, let's do that in another video. Yeah, let's do that in another video. So we go to Larry's parents. And Larry's parents actually play it off. And it's like, yeah, what are you doing today? Don't you have something to go to? And it's like, yeah, it's like, so they just basically just not even want to even talk anything about what's going on with Lily. So Larry actually just runs. And it turns out that he runs all the way. He wanted to go to the garage where he found an instant hand. But instead, he actually runs right into the people or basically the dad and the child that has the birthday party that he's supposed to audition for. And it turns out that one of his friends actually is there, but he's a dog too. <laughs> so there you go. And well, turns out the hair that he got rid of came back again and scared the kid. And there's lots of hair. Oh my gosh, lots of hair. And then the parents, oh yeah. So he runs all the way, goes there. And then he goes right into the house and says, mom and dad, and most likely right before they're well, not even their eyes. It's, and it sucks that this would have been the best visual you ever see. And most likely Shaggy Dog, that movie, most likely advanced it to the point of where we could actually see it today. Where we actually see before our very eyes, he turns into a dog. But because of the technology of the 1990s, you couldn't really do that. And some will actually speculate, wait, 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 wait. But Shaggy Dog wasn't created in the 2000s it was created way back in the 1970s 60s whatever and i'm like yes that's true and i haven't seen that movie and since i haven't seen that movie i don't know if they actually did the change which chances are they might have and then you're gonna say but why didn't they do the change like that into this episode and most likely i'll say most likely the money most likely money but it would be cool if they actually did it right before our eyes which hopefully you know Hopefully they do it someday. So anyways, um, the parents actually act kind of normal and well, he's a dog <laughs> and they start with explanations. Of course, Jack, I mean, of course, Larry gives the explanation during monologue being like, well, what it turns out is that Dr. Merkin was a scientist and the boys actually volunteered to do it. And since they volunteered to do it, it's actually where they turn humans into the do dogs into humans. And well, yeah, that's what happened, and apparently it's not very successful. And then Dr. Merkin just shows up, and it turns out that, yeah, he's not here for you, Larry. And it looks like he has a baby in hand. It turns out that Jasper, for some crazy reason, is a name of a girl. Jasper's a unisex name. Yeah, so that's the twist ending is that now he's focusing on cats turning cats into humans and well Jasper now it's like a reverse where it's like, oh great, now Jasper's gonna have a pet dog instead of Larry having a pet cat. <laughs> so there you go. That is exactly the difference between the episode and the book. My goodness, they they did a good job on the episode. I mean, seriously, they did a decent good job. They didn't have to cast more people because well Actually, I think in the book, we haven't even seen they We just heard about um, Howie and the Shouters. We haven't seen whatsoever in the book who's a part of that group. And chances are the group is gone, too. Anyways, the group most likely is dogs as well. So it's just they did some cool twists in the episode that actually made it fresh instead of just straight up being like, we're just going to put the book as an episode and there we go which is like yeah but they actually made it to the point of where even though it was kind of a dry book you still kind of would like to actually read the book and see what's the differences because there are differences and they did a good job actually making it so yeah you definitely need to watch you definitely need to read a book and you definitely would like to watch the show learn anything it's like if you watch the show you get the gist of it and they actually added some interesting details so anyways have a scary day and have a scary night